area was uh, neglected for a long uh, time. Uh, 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 plenty of agriculture activity is uh, going on. These developments are happening. As we know, this is a major cane belt uh, area. Uh, most of these uh, farmers are uh, doing uh, sugar cane farming. But uh, apart from sugar cane, we have all, uh, about more than uh, 50 uh, thousand hectares of land that is uh, well, well in this area for uh, uh, farming. Uh, whenever I come uh, uh, for official visit, I always take time out to meet the community, uh, talk to them in an informal, informal um, uh, setting, so that you know we can uh, relate to each other, uh, exchange views, uh, listen to your issues, and try to respond to you as, as, as far as possible. Uh, today I'm quite uh, honored to have uh, with me a number of uh, people uh, who would assist me in responding to you. Uh, we've got the Commissioner uh, Northern, Acting Commissioner Northern, got uh, Acting, uh, I mean, uh, the Divisional Police Commander, we've got representation from uh, reps from Energy Department, reps from Water uh, Authority, we've got Agro Marketing, Marketing Authority, and of course our <coughs> own staff here, uh, Ministry of Waterways and Environment, Ministry of Rural Maritime Development, and Ministry of Agriculture. Last Saturday, <coughs> I was uh, uh, at Kayasi. Kayasi, uh, Kayasi is uh, right in the interior of Nandronga. Those who are familiar with Nandronga, Kayasi is right in the interior, where we've got a government station. We've got agriculture office there, we've got a legal aid office there, uh, we've got uh, a DOS office there. And uh, we are expanding agriculture there. And we launched uh, our costed operational plan for Ministry of Rural and Maritime Development. Now what it means is that we have a vision, vision for rural and maritime development. We are going, forging ahead very fast, in a very fast way, in terms of taking services, getting infrastructure up to the standard <coughs> in rural and maritime area. Now I do understand that you all have issues which we will discuss but we need to understand that we are catching up, catching up with the issues that should have been dealt with long time back. One of the common issues when I go around and I hear from people <coughs> is Irish crossing. You know, Irish crossings is kind of a spillway. <coughs> and a lot of these Irish crossings, you know, are now have sunk. You know, over time, you know, vehicles have been passing. Um, heavy trucks have passed, so they have sunk. No doubt. Uh, and it is now causing a problem. A little bit of rain, students can't go to school, vehicles can't cross, and also threatening communities because of flooding. So people raise the issue that we want this Irish crossing to be replaced. We want that Irish crossing to be replaced. No. I understand. But you need to understand, we have over 200 Irish crossings around Fiji over 200 Irish crossings around Fiji. All of this needs to be replaced. Now had the government previously dealt with every year, let's say, replace two or three, then we would have not had that number today. We're now catching up with the backlog of those things that should have been done long time back. So what all we are asking <coughs> is that you bear with us, we understand, we really respect and appreciate your patience, but we will deal with these issues which will make a difference to your livelihood. I want to now speak on the issue of agriculture, rural maritime development, waterways and environment. Over the last three years you have seen that we have done massive amount of work in waterways and environment. What we have done <coughs> over the last three years was never done before in terms of drainage, in terms of riverbank <coughs> protection, in terms of river drainage, uh, dredging, in terms of seawall protection. Now, all these things are not a simple, easy, le least cost exercise, very costly exercise, because a lot of money, a lot of resources. I want to tell you that the amount of drainage work we need to do is massive. <coughs> massive. Despite doing massive amount of drainage work here in Manuelebu, still we get the request <coughs> from farmers to do drainage work, and we'll do it. But what, what I'm saying is that because <coughs> we were not doing infield drainage before, apart from sugar, we have a major backlog of drainage that needs to be done. 
because we were not doing rural residential drainage work, we've got a major backlog of drainage work that needs to be done. Drainage in villages, drainage in communities. We are now, we have started to do it at our cost, at our cost, not, not at all at your cost. So, and the issue with the river that needs to be cleared up, almost all the rivers in Fiji, around Fiji, needs to be cleared because of, over the last 20, 30 years, what's happening in, in the catchment, up in the catchment, our rivers, our waterways downstream are now clogged up. Clogged up with debris, clogged up with silt material, gravel, sand, silt, soil. It needs to be cleared. Almost <coughs> all the rivers are clogged up. And because of this, <coughs> down, downstream, in the floodplains, it is flooding. It is spilling over. And it's threatening communities, threatening you know, um, uh, infrastructure, threatening <coughs> villages. We need to protect them. So we need to clear this river, rivers, waterways. We have started, but this amount is so much that we need to go in partnership. You would have seen about uh, four weeks ago, we got a major advertisement out in papers, in the sun, asking for private sector to come in, clear the waterway, and you can take the silk material, sell it, and sell it, and make your own, generate your own revenue. So because. It's an emergency scenario. We need to clear all these waterways. So we are asking people to come forward who have got excavators, who would want to clear up, take the material. So we, 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 we're going, doing that. Then we've got riverbank protection. Very expensive exercise. A lot of rivers have, now the banks are scouring, banks are you know, eroding off. And because of that, we are losing good arable land. We need to protect this riverbank. Last year, we received 200,000 US dollars from the government of Korea to do nature-based solutions <coughs> to riverbank protection. Plant vetiva grass along the riverbanks. We have started the work. And we want to see that all the rivers around, the, around Fiji, the banks are protected. <coughs> if you protect the riverbanks, we will protect the communities. We will protect in our own infrastructure. There are schools beside river, and the river is threatening the school. There are roads beside river, creeks, and it is threatening. We need to protect the <coughs> river bank so that we protect our roads, our schools, our churches, our temples, our mosques, our infrastructure. <coughs> we have started to do that. I've asked our set of engineers in waterways, we need to look at a least cost solution. Half a kilometer, half a kilometer, 500 meters of uh, riverbank protection can cost us around five hundred thousand dollars, six hundred thousand dollars. We don't have that kind of money. No government in the world has that kind of money to spend, given the number of riverbanks that we need to protect. And therefore, the sustainable solution <coughs> is nature-based solution: planting of vetiver grass, designing. It. We have started, and we will do. We will do that for all. Then we have got seawall, coastal protection. A lot of places where the coastal erosion, where coastal erosion is taking place. And these coastal communities need to be protected. So we are doing that. Half a kilometer of Gabion Bank coastal protection costs us about 0.9 million, 1 million. I've asked our engineers to look at a simple solution of just bouldering, just putting boulders, which will, one, protect the bank, the coast, co coast, coast, coastal area, which will also minimize the the, the, the power of the wave and therefore you know, protect our bank, uh, the coastal area. As we speak, Vero, uh, Vero Village in uh, Ovalau, our, our machine, our engineers are doing that. So we don't have to give it out to contractors. So we're looking at this kind of least cost solution to protecting our rural communities, our villages from <coughs> coastal erosion. And given that given climate change, given that we are a, a, a maritime country, uh, we need to uh, really up our game and protect our communities which are being threatened by issues of climate change, which our Honorable Prime Minister is a champion. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to, to push agriculture, as you know, this is my biggest assignment. I'm very passionate about agriculture, there's huge potential in agriculture, I'm looking at really getting agriculture to leapfrog. 
there are certain binding constraints that is holding back agriculture, being binding constraints. One is aging farmers. A lot of farmers now here, sitting here, have done extremely well when they were young, but they're aging out. You know, how long? How long? You know, you know, when you have a draft bullock, when you have a draft horse, you work with the horse for you know, five, one year, two year, five year, ten year. After some time, you realize that this horse is too old. What do you do? You go remove the rope, you, you know, send it you know, in, in the jungle, they you know, have a peaceful time at the end. So similarly, we really we are stuck with farmers who are very old. We need to pump in more young farmers. We need to get young farmers. We cannot push agriculture without getting young, able-bodied, commercially-minded farmers. Commercially-minded farmers. We need to push into commercial agriculture. You know, so we've got a new uh, program to train young farmers and then get them into farming. <coughs> Just uh, about uh, two months ago, we uh, got about 24 <coughs> young farmers who have learned, learned who were trained at Nabusu Agriculture College. We uh, ran a workshop for them. They are now back on to uh, trying to go and develop the farm. We'll assist them. Next year, there will be about 40 of them because you know another lot from FNU. So we're looking at 40 young farmers coming into agriculture. Because of free education, because of opportunities in the formal sector, <coughs> children normally do not want to get into agriculture. So we're now kind of incentivizing young children to, to give them one year or two year training at FNU, at Nabuso, and then getting them into the field. Other binding constraints include farm roads. Now, all of you uh, have issues with farm roads. We have made a decision that we will do all farm roads. We will do all farm roads at our cost. What we have done will be making an announcement where we've identified the farm road, we've done the scoping, what needs to be done, We've identified the nearest river, which is clogged up, where we need to extract the gravel. We've got the consent from the Matangali. We're now submitting it to Environment Department, which comes under me, to get the consent, to get an exemption on EIE, and do a EMP, Environmental Management Plan, when we extract <coughs> the gravel. And we'll use that gravel to make the farm road. In Tavuni, in Tavuni, in one place, we did six kilometers of farm road. One kilometer of farm road, if you give it to a contractor, they'll charge $40,000 for one kilometer. We do it at $6,000. Now you can see how much savings we make. The number of kilometers of farm road that we need to do, we just don't have that kind of money to hire contractors to go and do farm roads in Fiji. There's farm road requests that, that's with us, in Ministry of Agriculture, dating back to about 20 years ago. We need to do. If we don't do farm road, how can we expect farmers to get the produce carted to the market. So we're going to do all your farm roads. Of course, we can't do it in one month's time, two months' time. The amount of farm roads we have with us, we're looking at about one and a half year to complete that. Our machinery, gravel from the neighborhood, our operator, our fuel, we will do it for all of you. All of you. We'll be making an announcement on that. Similarly, as I said, we will do drainage for you. So we will do a drainage. But if you want to do drainage in your farm, we'll do it. But you need to organize your own culvert. Infill, private farms, you organize your culvert if you want to use culvert. But we will do the drainage for you. But we will maintain all public drains. We'll make all maintain all public drains. We understand to go into big time, large scale farming, we need mechanization. We are introducing mechanization. As we speak, last night, uh, I got a deal from uh, uh, China. Uh, they want to give us some uh, machinery, including, including a rig to do borehole, dig well. So whoever wants to do borehole, we will dig it for you. But then you will have to get your own piping and machinery and pump and all those. So we will do it for you free, you know, once the pump comes in. So you can have a water source at your own place. Now, we have now decided to outsource plowing of land. All along, for non-sugar, for sugar you're getting a grant, you do deal with that. For non-sugar, we've been using our own tractor. But because of that, there's huge demand, and because of that, there's delays. One week, one month, because there's massive, massive demand. So we have now decided, over the, from last two weeks ago, we will outsource. So, which means if, you, if someone wants to plant cassava there, and we don't have tractor here, we will hire a tractor, which we've already got quotation, from the village to do your plowing. 
within 14 days. You pay $20 an hour, within 14 days you'll get the tractor to do your plowing so that you bring new land under production. In Wainiporo, at the moment, uh, how many tractors, private sector tractors are operating now? Seven. Six. Seven tractors. How many acres we have to plow? 210 hectares. 210 hectares. Our own one tractor will not be able to plow, it will be next year. Another, another one, two, six months it will take. So we've got seven, seven tractors, 210 acres, we're paying them. <coughs> Farmers are paying $20, the difference we pay. So that we can quickly plow it, you can get on your business in terms of cultivating you know, and, and, and looking after the crop. Then we say that you have an issue, you have a concern, and any farmer would have this concern that I'm uh, you know, having cassava or dalo or rice, but who we will buy? I want to tell you that we will buy. We will buy the crop, we will buy your crop, as long as you grow the crop that we have on our list. We will buy all your rice. <coughs> all your rice, Fiji rice. And we have now decided that we will, we will buy wet rice. I understand, you grow rice, and then when you, when you harvest it, you may not be able to dry it, because the condition is, the weather is not good. You know, you know, you've got ducks and chickens around. So, we will buy wet rice, but at a lower price, not $800, $700. We will buy it. Miller, the miller will have a dryer, who will dry it, and then, then, and then um, you know, get the, get the paddy out. So you don't have to worry about that, we will buy. We will buy all your cassava. We've got Agro Marketing Authority rep here, where is he? There you go. We are, we're working very, now, it's our own institution, paid by government. So they will they'll adopt our agenda. Our agenda is to take the market to the farmer. You don't have to worry about market. You don't have to go and look for market. You buy all your cassava, all your dalo, all your yam, all your duruka, all your bongo chili. These are the crops on our list now. We want to buy all PGMP. You, you, you grow PGMP. <coughs> we are importing. We are importing uh, 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 dal. We are importing uh, you know, pulses from you know, outside Fiji. <coughs> we have land here. Now, hilly land, not very too much rain, is ideal for PGMP. Ideal for PGMP. You need to do a little bit of number crunching and see which crop will provide you higher return per acre. And then, based on the suitability of climate, land, you plant that. We're going big time into formation, farming. So, we assist you in land preparation. We will buy. We will do drainage. We will do farm road. What else? The rest, it's your business. You need to treat it as your business, just like the corner shop down there, where the corner shop doesn't ask government to buy the, build their building, doesn't ask government to buy, buy the pickup for them, doesn't ask government to buy their stock for them. That's what, when we, what we mean when we say it's a commercial farming. I find, I find you know, a lot of difficulty when I go around. Farmers say, give me a wheelbarrow, give me a tractor, give me this, give me that. We are not here <coughs> to give out handouts. That's not the kind of agriculture that we want to promote. We, we need, you need to get out of this dependent agriculture. It's your private business. We can't fund your private business. You need to treat it as a private business. We're not sharing your revenue. We're not sharing your revenue. Just like the corner shop down there, we're not sharing the corner shop's revenue. It's their own, their own business. It's their own you know, um, you know, uh, business model. Create surplus, they keep it. So, we are saying, that if you need financial support, we will take it to FDB. We will do your business plan. We will fill up the form. We will take you to FDB. We'll get FDB to fund you. Our job. We will write your business plan. We'll write your proposal. That's why our officers are here, fully paid to serve you. But please, please, don't ask for subsidies and grants we will not give. We'll give one startup. One startup through land preparation, through uh, you know fencing material for livestock farmers. <coughs> for livestock farmers, I've asked our staff to get me entire list of livestock farmers in Fiji. One final cleaned up list, ten animals and more. We want them to move into medium and large holding. To do that, we need to provide them with fencing material once. 
After that, you can expand your own paddocks. You grow, you sell the goat, you ship the, the cattle, the beef cattle, and then you buy your fencing material. See, you can't, I mean, I, I get this when we give you a, 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 let's say, eight coil fencing material. After one year, you come back and say, Minister, I want some more fencing material. And I say, hey, what have you done with your goat and the sheep that you sold? That's not commercial farming. What is commercial farming? <coughs> commercial farming is number one, you grow or raise for the market. <coughs> number two, you create surplus of profit. Number three, part of the profit, you reinvest in that farm. If you're not doing it, you're not a commercial farmer. And now, in national interest, we need to go for commercial farming. We're getting a lot of interest, we're getting a lot of interest from people who now want to come and do corporate agriculture, big time. So you need to treat your farm as a business. If you treat your farm as a leisure activity, if you do hobby farming, then that's not acceptable. You can do it, but we cannot pour government money into that because government money must go in national interest. So very excited. We are here to uh, listen to you and uh, uh, see how we can be part of your growth process and support you. And uh, we've got people here to respond to you. I look forward to having this talent with you. No? I want to uh, pass you uh, best wishes for our <coughs> Prime Minister. And I want to assure you that we are here to ensure that we all, whether you are here or in Dekombia or Isawas, all want to grow together. No one should be left out. This is the government's you know, policy. This is our paradigm. We want to grow together. Distribution must take place rather than you know accumulation and centralization of wealth. Okay? Thank you very much. Uh, livestock section in the Northern Division. And also we have uh, Minister of uh, Waterways uh, and uh, Technical of South. Uh, sir, uh, to, from the forum that uh, prior to Minister of Waterways, yes. uh, just from, just uh, as Minister, we uh, from to Ministry, uh, one only move, it's a big area. Uh, uh, last year we had our I don't know if it's contract. We have four contractors. One is we will, uh, with the new contract, we will try to address uh, most of the uh, uh, machineries. Two excavators, uh, a dump truck, a low back truck.